Right now we'll be looking at a construction detail that shows a contractor how to attach the plywood to the bolts. If something isn't done, a modification of some type, then the plywood won't be connected to the bolts and naturally the seismic retrofit won't work. So let's go ahead and take a look at this detail quickly. So this right here is a stud and then over here 16 inches over this way is a stud and you'll have a cripple wall have you know studs all the way down the wall. And then here you see the attachment. So you have four 10 penny nails. There's one there, one there, one there, one there. Or FEMA P1100 also allows you to put in three screws. So those are, that's how a FEMA P1100 does it. You either four 10 penny nails or three screws. And the important thing to see here is that it says to pre-drill for the nails. Let's go ahead and look at some of the things that can happen when they are not pre-drilled. Here we have an example of a split block. So as you can see, even though this nail was right towards the center of the block, it's still split right along here. And that's because, you know, you never know for sure, you know, where the wood comes from that the contractor will be putting in there. These old two by fours, you may have it in the back of his yard. It's been there for a year or two, some scrap from uh, another job he did. And then he goes and he puts it under a house and then it splits. So this would not be you know, all that uncommon, especially if the wood is dry. Here's another block, obviously, that the nail split. And this right here is one. And if you notice right here, it's strange because it didn't really split it very much. And then you come over here and the nail, which appears to be right here, you know, split all the way down the block. And then this one right here split some here and then over here. And the reason I bring all that up is that these blocks, for some reason, they're not very predictable. You try to stay away from the end. Uh, and if you, you know, if you get close to the end, sometimes it'll split and sometimes it won't. And sometimes you get in the middle, you don't expect it to split at all and it will split. So these blocks are very unpredictable and that's probably a reason they should be avoided uh, when possible. Contractors are not going to pre-drill and let me explain why. Contractors use nail guns for everything. They use it to nail plywood and they also use it to nail blocks. And the reason for that is it's just so fast. You can put four nails in a block literally in five seconds. So nail guns are going to be used. And the other problem with nail guns and pre-drilling is nail guns are not very precise. So if you pre-drill a hole, you can't actually set up the nail gun so that the nail will go straight in the hole when you shoot the nail. So that's simply out of the question. It's not going to happen. Now what can happen if someone does everything by hand, you can actually pre-drill. And let me show you what that would involve. So over here, if, here's the block that's been cut. Here's another block that's been cut. So let's assume he's uh, done four nails, like four holes right here for his nails. So he would put the pre-drill and then he would put a nail in the hole and then the hammer would come down and hit the head of the nail and then he would end up nailing the block into the sill. Now, what if this cripple wall is only one foot? It's going to be physically impossible to bring a hammer up high enough so that you can nail down into the nail. So this is actually not in the least bit viable. One way to do that is by flush cutting the mud sill. Here's our situation that we saw before. This is a two by six across here. Then there's a two by four. So that's four feet right here. And if we put a piece of plywood on, it'll just sit right on top and not be connected to the bolts. So with a flush cut system, what we do is we flush cut the, you know, we take out a piece of wood right here. And now this mud sill right along here is flush with the two by fours right along here, which is also flush with the uh, the top of the cripple wall right here. So now in this circumstance we can put a piece of plywood right across here and nail it here and nail it here and nail it here and nail it here. I have had people tell me it is not possible to flush cut a mud seal because a saw does not exist. If you go to Home Depot, you're not going to find the saw. You have to, this is a specialty item. This one right here is one that we happen to make because it's just cheaper for us to do it that way and we can refine it to our particular needs. But they also make another one and I'll show you that in just a second. This is how they work. It's pretty simple. This uh, saw blade is flush with the stud right here. And what this technician has done is he snapped a chalk line 
right along the sill. Then he took his saw and he ran it right along the chalk line. And then because it flush, uh, cut flush with the studs, this piece of wood right here, he can just remove and uh, throw it away. And now he has a surface where everything is on the same plane. So now the entire sill will be on the same plane as the studs, will be on the same plane as the uh, top plates. So this is how these uh, flush cut saws work. This is a commercially available flush cut saw. And you can see right here, the blade is flush with the body of the saw. So all you need to do is you need to put this blade flush up against the studs and cut through the mud sill. And you'll have your flush cut mud sill just like we saw uh, just a second ago. And you can nail your plywood up and you'll be all done. Besides nails to attach a block to the mud sill, you can also use staples. Staples are a very good choice because they simply don't split the block. You can put a staple in every half inch and you still won't get any splitting. Here's a block you can see right here and it has approximately 64 staples. And two staples equals one nail approximately as far as the lateral resistance goes. So you're looking at a block that has approximately 32 nails in it. And as you can see, there's been absolutely no problem with splitting. This is the last method we're going to be looking at to attach plywood to the mud seal and to the bolts. This is a block, just like the stapled blocks and just like the nailed blocks. But in this case, we use SDS screws. These are quarter inch screws, primarily made by Simpson Strong Tie, and they make a really good uh, connection that we use you know, fairly often. We didn't use them very much when we first started out because uh, I don't even remember being available. But now they're a really great option and we use them quite a bit. Now one of the best things about these is that from an inspection point of view it's very easy because uh, you know the heads stick up uh, beyond the, the top of the wood and you can take a flashlight and you can see from you know a good distance uh, if the lag screws are there or not. So that's one of the big uh, selling points for these. The other thing is they don't split. They're kind of like staples. You can put a million of them in there. You don't have to pre-drill them. It's just overall a fabulous product. So the way these work is, uh, these are usually three inches long. So let me show you what this actually signifies. Sometimes it's hard to tell when you're looking at these pictures what's here. So this is a stud, the bottom of a stud. Then you come over here and you would be 16, and a half, uh, 16 inches on center over here to this stud. And then in between here, the distance between here and here is going to be 14 to 14 and a half inches. And that's what this block is. This block is 14 inches. So we've got one lag screw right here. We've got one lag screw right here. And we have one lag screw right here. And in redwood, I believe they can resist, I think, 330 pounds per, uh, per screw. So, you know, we have a thousand pounds of capacity right here, which is, you know, that's pretty good. Many years ago, I was on another committee that put together a standard called Standard Plan A, which is used, you know, throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. And while on that committee, I contacted the largest research lab for Sherwalls in the country, if not the world, in uh, Tacoma, Washington. And I wrote to them, their research scientists, and I said, hey, of all these different techniques we use to attach the plywood to the mud sill, which ones do you think are the best? And this is the letter that uh, I received. So the first one, it says they prefer the flush cut method. Then after that, the reverse block method. And then the stapled blocking method. And then finally, the nailed blocking method. Now notice that the nailed blocking method is the method that FEMA P1100 is using uh, as an alternative to the lag screws. And according to uh, the American Plot Association, this is the inferior way of doing it. And the committee, the Standard Plan A committee, they decided to use the nailed blocking method because what they said was, you know, homeowners are going to be doing this, this work and we don't want them to have to pay for special tools and, you know, it'll just be inconvenient for them. And I didn't think that was a good reason because there are contractors that do a lot of this work too. The chair of the committee, uh, his building department taught a class to homeowners on how to retrofit their homes. And if he had to start telling them, hey, you got to buy this, you know, fancy saw, a little staple gun, etc., a lot of people wouldn't have done it. So he just decided to go ahead and keep the, you know, I believe, an inferior product 
by not recommending those other uh, methods that we just saw. So anyway, I'm just going to let you read this letter at your leisure. If you would like the original letter that was sent to me, I believe in 2003, it's been quite a while, uh, I can send you that letter. Mm -hmm.